uno de nosotros es como un simple grano de clima y es que el viento nos puede soplar a, a un lado. Pero si estamos juntos somos como un saco de clima que ni siquiera el hombre más fuerte puede movernos. Alone, we are just like a single grain of quinoa, and even the wind can blow us away and disappear us. But if we are together, we will make a ton of quinoa, and not even a strong man could move us. Mama, that is Cajon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Miguel Tenorio. I am from Ecuador, South America. And I'm gonna tell you about, I'm, today I'm gonna tell you about my people, about the reality of millions of people, of indigenous people in Latin America, especially focused now in Ecuador. Before I, I start this panel, I just wanna point that I don't wanna diminish the morality of any, hum, any human or any child group. I respect every human group, and I just wanna expose something that for centuries has been an issue, and now it's still invisible for many people. In my blood, in my blood runs two races. The, ra the in my blood runs two races: the blood of the brave indigenous and the blood of the cruel Spanish. And today we have come to speak about this one specific one, about the one that makes me proud, about the, the one of rep that represents my identity as an Ecuadorian, that have been calling for justice for more than five centuries. Five thousand twenty years ago, the white men arrived to the Americas and claimed that hey, they had discovered a new world. Let me tell you something, they did not discover anything. Because when they arrived, we had our culture, we had our religion, we had costumes, we had an entire, an entire society based on sustainable practices. The only thing that they had was fire weapons and domestic beasts, which made them take power over us. We had some even new discoveries about medicine and astronomical resources. They call it savages. They call us savages and excuse their atrocities by saying that they brought us to civilization. To civilization means to say to murder, abuse, and violence. I want to be as white as the kind of light in the sky. And more than centuries, well, more than five centuries later, I am proud to say that although many of our civilizations have disappeared and many of the customs don't still longer existing, my people is still blowing the kippa in the Pacific Ocean and climbing the infinite Andes, working with their own hands, breaking into the Amazonic jungles to take care of the spirits that have been there. They remain fighting for keeping their integrity, to keep their background, to be free and respected. In Ecuador, the, the Constitution recognizes our country as a multicultural and plurinational country since the Constitution of 20, 2009. It is a land where more than 50 million people live civil in more than 21 human groups, and more than 11 languages are being spoken. It's diversity everywhere, but the question is, is that diversity respect, or is it just a fallacy made up by the people who is governing us, that take advantage of the population that have less access to education? Because I believe that education is the only tool that can take about out of the underdeveloped to any society. I totally condemn that many children are working in the streets of my homeland and being prevented from receiving that, value, that valuable um, resource. I also see people working for lower wages. And I have a question. Will you work for a month, day and night, for $218, which is the average? Putting, putting way for the for many of the women that works in the household as servants. Would you work day and night working in the huge farms with by hand because we don't have resources, tractors or machinery, we still by hand work, hand labor 
or both for less than three hundred dollars a month to fund a family of more than five children. Would you live in more houses, sometimes even underground? I have this independent those people working in these huge farms in non-safe conditions, working in factories with a little or no non-security. And I take the opportunity to invite every one of the people here to check their labels in the clothing and see where they come from and see if they, if they come from a child level of many indigenous people who have been explored around the world in Latin America, Africa, Asia, or somewhere else. For people who haven't been educated and haven't get that resource to, to get out of their underdevelopment and to defend themselves against the people who is supposed to be superior in the way that they think. I am considered socially white, although I am a mix of Spanish and indigenous, but I feel 100% proud of my Kenyani and Inca blood. And I have seen this kind of abuse and I have seen their pain. I have talked to them and how they are discriminated in schools by being called ignorant when some of them are even more smart than white people. I have seen them working for long hours in the, in the haciendas and 14% of the Catalonians are illiterate. From this 14%, 30.9% are indigenous people. I have worked with them to literate them and I have seen how kind they are, how hard worker are they, and how submissive are they to people who they think they are their patrons. And I feel so happy to realize their perception of democracy, because for the indigenous people, the democracy goes beyond, beyond, that, a go that, beyond that a government can make for other people. The democracy is being, works in the smallest community. It's something in the indigenous in the indigenous community called Minga, which is community work, where a, where a community works for a household, household for a single per, for a per person, and then this person works with the rest of the community for other person, and this cycle goes all around the year, and they can harvest in the accurate time, and or well, the feeling of. The, the sense of organic food that we really exist in Ecuador because most of our food is actually organic. They cultivate our food and they sell it in the market. Most of the people in the upper mar markets, because we don't have like Walmart or Walgreens in Ecuador, we have open markets where you choose the food and buy for a single person. So they work in that, they work really, really hard. And the few time that they have to work for their own, they share this labor with other people and make a fish in their society. I also feel proud that in the indigenous towns, the crime rate is almost zero percent because they practice the indigenous justice, which for some Western societies could seem barbaric and unacceptable, but actually I consider really acceptable because they put a person who has committed crime and who has followed their morality on trail, and then this person is put under cold water to purify them, and then he or she punishes by her, her, his or her parents or ancestors, which have many of the, of the indigenous people of Ecuador, people with high morality and values. These people have fight for respect in the colony with the revolution of Tupac Amaru and Dumanyawi. But it was in 19, 1927 when, uh, when a woman called Mama Transit Amawaya, which was a woman who was abused by her partner since she was 14, which child was, whose child was killed, and who had a really abusive husband, who worked as a servant and as a wasikama and wasitungo in the huge farms, rebelled and organized and used her leadership skills to organize the people and to in, into an organization called the Inca in the community of Kayambi in the heart of Ecuador. Since she started, many people followed her. Mama Dolores Cajuango, the Bishop Leonidas Proaño, another white and indigenous people. Even Af African Ecuadorians um, established many organizations to make uh, their respect. But in November 16 of 1986, 
the name it the organization Equabunari with ideas of those heroes and heroines created the first Latin American organization that actually had more power in our country than any, anyone else. Since they start, and then with the with La, with La Conaye, which stands for Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador, they start to build political power. And right now, they have kicked out three presidents because they don't respect their, their, their values. This organization are composed by Kicho Akanyari, Otavalo, Saraguro, Epa, Sachi, Acciona, Sequoia, Schwarz, Gourani, and Epera, which compose more than 65% of our population, which is sounds ironic because they are not a minority, but they are treated as a one because their lack of education. Sadly, they don't know about many of their rights. They have private and they have mind, mind wash as superior, as, as inferior beings, people who consider them to come. But since they started, as I say, they kick out three governments, they, they promote the repartition of the land from the huge haciendas of feudos or latifundios that were owned by people who had gorgeous life with much money, but with, uh, because of this labor. They also, they also achieve bilingual education and they fight still. These people won't stop until their identity and identity will be respected as the original owner of the land. So much of faith, thank you. And right now, I am going to introduce you some of the people from Ecuador, some of their features, some of the art. They are really good artists. They are really well working with their hands. And some of the icons. You are going to see some flowers too that are pretty representative and some animals.
How do you get involved in like, how can like students here get involved in doing like for indigenous rights groups and stuff down, uh, down in either Ecuador or other parts of Latin America? American school? Yeah. Organization. We have many Konaye, Kwagunari, they, they make connection. Okay. And, well, like sometimes it can, sometimes it cannot. Okay. It depends on the community and how well they are organized. We still have been, um, groups that haven't been contacted by civilization, mm -hmm. which they still really, so some of people don't want any, any, any introduction from other people, so depend on the, in, of the group. Usually the people from the Kichwa people that is around me, they are pretty open. Mm. And they, they usually, the, the groups that come to work in Ecuador are um, Lutheran or Christian or non-Catholic uh, Christian groups. And people is, have get pretty effective with them because that culture or culture is then with the Catholic and when they come, they reject some of the other beliefs. So mm. sometimes they can be really, really picky about that. But it's really easy to contact the organizations. The Coronai and Coronai are the biggest ones. Okay. I'll talk to you until we're done. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just wondering, Miguel, if you can say a little bit more about how they're organized, because you mentioned a couple times that they've managed to get enough political clout to oust a few presidents. So is that just through yeah. voting? Is that through media campaign? How exactly? Can when they start to organize in the 70s, actually, um, they did that in a democratic way. As I told you, many women could achieve ed education, two women especially, Mama Dolores Cajuango and Mama Francis Amaguana. Other thing that played a big role in, in that develop was the Catholic Church because the bishop of the community, when they started, supported them a lot. And he's actually pretty well known in Ecuador, Leonidas uh, Cruano. So when they um, start to make their organizations, they were a little bit oppressed by the, by the owners of the land because they didn't want them knowledge. When they get knowledge, they obviously are going to rebel and they're going to claim for their human rights. So many of them um, protest against it. two governments, Lucio Gutierrez, Chamin Mawad, and uh, Abdallah Bukaram were overthrown by, by the indigenous people. They, when they go out of the, of, to the street, when they organize themselves, it's really, really hard to stop them. Um, they close the ways, they close the, the highways with fires. So, you don't want to mess with anything. They have organized themselves very, very good now. That they they have they have their leaders. Uh, this last spring, um, break, spring break, I went to Ecuador and I accidentally fall into a protest. And I saw their leadership. They have a lot of leadership and leaders, and they are facing this disrespect to the community and all the different, of all the groups. I thought the government was trying to promote violence to divide them and to manipulate them. They still pray tight. Since they start to fulfill their identity and respect, they have been affected. So it's more through kind of civil disobedience protest and not through kind of elected yeah, well, the, 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 the situation in this case was the government wanted to bring Chinese companies to do open sky mining, which will pollute really, really bad, and I thought the government said that it is not going to do it, it is going to pollute. So the indigenous one likes the sustainable life. They, many people don't understand their prescription development. They are really sustainable. They uh, want to keep their land. They, they don't care if they have tons of money. They just want to live the summa causa. That's the concept of the, the view of the essential right of the good life. Yeah, and we also have uh, these human organizations have to be isolated in like called an office called Yasmin, that is Sarai and Tanum Um the last time that someone had contact with them was in when they were in the So they are voluntarily isolated by the government gonna take this land to oil. And it's the most it's considered one of the most biodiversity cow plays in the in the in the whole planet. So it's having a fight. So right now, the government, the actual government, is being really.
really authoritarian and is having a lot. It's, it's just like a bomb of time. Some of these, like one of the boys in this circle, just get put up and, and go out. They already went, but they went to the They are just holding it um, because they also want to keep their integrity. They don't want people killed or, or being seen being being seen as violent people because they are not a little bit violent. They are pretty nice. But the ones that are kind of violent is because they just want to keep their integrity and they have too much experience with white people that they don't want anymore. But you say they're pretty nice. How do you build a sense of solidarity with the other like indigenous groups? I don't know if you talk about this in the presentation, like other indigenous groups around Latin America. Like, how do you guys come together as like, these are separate indigenous groups, but they're all affected by this, you know, uh, colonial invasion and whatnot. And so how do you guys like come together outside just your local indigenous groups to build something well, bigger? Well, it's hard, like, we have, we have tried, like, we tried. Sadly, in many other countries, as Peru and Bolivia, as two specific, because Colombia almost doesn't really have indigenous anymore. And the South Con, um, Chile, uh, and Argentina, they don't have indigenous groups either anymore. So the most concentrated are in Bolivia and in Peru, but sadly, they haven't organized themselves pretty well. Like, oh, it's not right to say, but right now, Bolivia has an ignorant president who doesn't really know how to. They have um, Evo Morales, who's supposed to be an indigenous, but he doesn't really, I don't think that he understands the international politics. So they haven't been able to organize this pretty well. We have some contacts with uh, especially Peruvian groups, but they are they, they have a relevant situation worse than the Ecuadorians could have. So they don't really have organized pretty well. And in, in Brazil, too, some of the Brazilian groups are being kicked out of their land to soil plantations promoted by China. Wow. And for lumber and for um, grassing of the cattle. So they don't really have organized pretty well themselves. That's why I say that the Ecuador is the most well organized indigenous group. Uh, maybe you went over this, but how many indigenous groups are there in Ecuador? You know? At 21, like, that have been that they have like an or organization themselves, but are a little minority groups that have split by themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, they are a little bit more, but pre uh, 21 are the ones that are seen or uh, recognized officially, which is a lot for like a place twice as Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, I guess it's like they're highlands, lowlands. There's all these different. Yeah. Um, the, we don't really have any more indigenous in the in the East Coast line because that was the first place where the plantations were done for later. But we have a lot in the highlands and we have some and the most original ones in the in the Amazon. success so far. Um, first annual, more to come, hopefully next year. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I hope you guys gain some new perspectives on what participatory democracy is, gain some new insight, some diverse, um, different diverse aspects of it. And once again, thank you all for coming. Yes. Yeah, if you guys want to stick around, we're gonna, we'll probably meet yeah, up yeah, up there. We'll, we'll go back to the um, visual presentations. Yeah, well, or if, if you're interested in getting involved in any of these things, like we have an organization, Social Science Society, and yep. he's the vice president. Yep. Um, and we're always looking for more students to get involved and do like this and actually applying what we're learning in here and sharing with each other like to the real life context and bringing more of that here on campus. Because as yeah. you see, there's not a lot of it here. Yeah, we meet um, 
Thursdays at 5.30 and Harvey yep. 3.29. Yep. Thank you guys. Thank you.